Good morning, modern steaders. We have some crazy weather still. Winter is lingering like this bad cold I have. Man, and I'm getting sick of both of them. I'm ready for, let's get the light adjusted. I'm ready for my cold to be gone, for Gina's cold to be gone, and for the nice spring weather to come. I mean, we got chicks here. We got the meat chicks that are just got here yesterday. We got our egg layers. They're probably what? A little over a month old. We got lots of meat in the freezer, in the walk-in cooler. We can be doing some lots of barbecues this summer, making some hot dogs, some BLTs. I mean, we're just ready. We're ready for this nice weather. But guess what? <sighs> Mother Nature isn't ready to let go yet. We've had a ton of stuff going on lately. And I was thinking, you know what? We need to update on a couple of things. And the first one is, because I am terrible when we have a lot of stuff going on. I can get very focused on, okay, this is gonna get done, and then I forget all the little things that I wanna remember, but I remember to write down the pig weights. So let's go inside. One of them is in kilograms, so we gotta convert that over to pounds, and we'll find out what the weights were that we measured. While we were harvesting the pigs, I wrote down on the five gallon pail cover what their weight was. So the first pig was 132 kilograms, so that was 291 pounds. I am not very good at keeping records and keeping track of all this stuff. This year, one of my goals is to get better with that. Let's look at what I did, I'm proud of myself. Right here, I have the weights written down from the pigs. Normally, I forget it in my head and I have to go back and watch the movie the video. So what I want to do right now is I'm going to write the weights down. So we had 288 and that one really weighed 291 and then we had 267 and it really weighed 274. To me that is just crazy how accurate that can be. I mean I did that Two days before we harvested the pigs and it turned out super accurate. I wrote that down. I'm gonna put that in that leather bound book that I got. And that's one of the reasons I got the leather bound book is I'm not good at keeping track of stuff. And people they always ask me on the, the channel, how do you do this? How do you do that? Or what was the outcome? What's your recipe? So I'm working on getting better with that. Olivia's really good with that, and we're gonna keep track of everything. And this year, I'm gonna keep track of the feed, how much feed we feed our chickens, and the pigs, and everything. Because normally, I don't think that way. So, that's one of my promises. This year, we're gonna get better with that. I'm gonna get better with documenting that stuff so we can share it with all the modern steaders. I am surprised Figaro's not over here. The chicks are doing awesome they did really good the first night they're all nice and healthy we haven't had any casualties they've been drinking nice the water is working awesome and so is the turbo feeder give it a little shake and boom peek inside still got water i just love the setup we're busy Everybody's busy. We got so much stuff going on. This is just one last step we have to do. We don't have to worry about putting feed or water in the coop a couple of times a day or cleaning out wood shavings out of everything. It just saves us so much time. I love it. All right, we gotta get some water. But the tomato plants, look at them. The tomato plants are going crazy. Hopefully this weekend, so today's this weekend, hopefully while we're not making a video, or we'll make a video, and we'll get all this stuff outside. The peppers are doing good. We just gotta get everything into the outdoor kitchen. So, time should be perfect for that. Let's check out the walk-in. Some blood sausage. Some Cotechino sausage, I believe that's how you say it, C-O-T-T-E-C-H-I-N-O. 
but we put them in the casings and made little balls out of them. That was just for the fun of it. This is last year's prosciutto or last season's prosciutto. This is this season's prosciutto. This is a stuffed trotter and hock with sausage in it. And I forget where that comes from, but that is a holiday dish. It's got sausage in it, and the sausage has nutmeg and other spices in it. So when you bite into it and taste it, it's like, mm, it tastes like Christmas. It's delicious. We got our bacon curing. We can be smoking that soon. But the cool bot is working perfect. made a bunch of nice delicious bone broth with the pigs and then we canned it right here in our pressure canner so now we can keep this on our shelves for indefinitely and it'll last. Um, we condensed it down so one pint can make the minimum of one quart worth of broth so that's nice. We also have some nice beautiful lard here that we render down and canned. Now we just gotta get organized with all our stuff and we're gonna be eating good and making some good dishes on the channel. Let's go outside, we'll check on the animals and then I gotta get cleaning up some of our mess left behind from the class. With the cold, with my cold and the weather, I haven't gone out there to clean up so I need to do that today. Tell you what, that hot water spigot comes in handy for the outdoor kitchen. So we have a little bit of a mess in here. Not too bad. Get that water running through and get any ice out. Got a nice fire going, get the kitchen warmed up. Let's go check on all the chickens. The chickens are loving the free range. Right, Mr. Biggs? <laughs> Time to get them some more feed, but look how good they're doing. They're growing amazingly. It's gonna be time to get them outside pretty soon. I was kind of thinking, get these guys outside too next week, and when the meat birds are a week old, think of in New York City with the heat light out here, and we won't have to have them in our basement. So that's the plan as of right now. So it is quiet here at Lumna Acres without the pigs. I talked to our local pig farmer in middle to end of May. We'll be getting some more piglets. So that'll be nice, but for now, it's quiet out here. But look at all that deep bedding. That's gonna make some beautiful compost. I can't wait. That's all frozen in there still. But once it dries up, I'll be able to get the Kubota in here, take out all that bedding, and make a nice compost pile. Man, that's gonna be good. We're gonna move the pig pen location. I think we're gonna have it down here, but time will tell once it warms up some. I made this harvest table for the class the day before, and I'm loving this table better than that table. I don't know. Leave it in the comments down below and tell me which table you like better. We got this one made out of rough sawn lumber that I sanded, and this is made out of mahogany, walnut and then some cherry 
But I'm, I'm really liking this one. We used our all-American canner for canning the broth, and it worked awesome. I was impressed. You only need to can your broth for 20 minutes, so it didn't take long. That was definitely one of the lessons I learned from harvesting our pigs last time, is we didn't have time to can it and it didn't get canned and all that broth we made went to waste because it's only good for a week or you have to freeze it or can it and we planned on canning it but we never got to it so this time I made sure we did it while everything else was going on and it didn't take any more time now that's a lot of bowls I'd say that's probably been one of my biggest takeaways from these butchering classes. Whether it's for pigs or for chickens or just food prep, you can never have enough containers. Stainless steel bowls are awesome. We've been picking up some totes that they find that they get salmon in at our local co-op. They just throw them away. Those worked really well for the class. And I picked up a bunch of these food tubs from Cabela's last Christmas. For the last class I had one because on Amazon they're 30 bucks. On Cabela's they're, I want to say they're 10 bucks. And then during Christmas they were half off so I picked up, I want to say 10 of them. And I should have picked up more. They're going to come in very handy for picking vegetables, when we're harvesting our chickens, when we're curing meats, when we're making sausages. I mean you can never have enough containers. So if this is one thing you want to do I say keep your eye out for containers, whether they're at yard sales, your grocery store, wherever you can find them. Army Navy Surplus Store, that's not the one I was thinking of. The Salvation Army, if you can go to any places like that and pick up stainless steel bowls, that's what we've been doing, keeping our eye out when we find the stuff, we grab it. One of the many reasons I love having the outdoor kitchen is the big old mop sink. I can clean. Big old messes, five gallon pails out here. If I splash and get water everywhere, I'm not gonna get in trouble. We had a lot of people questioning us why we were using galvanized tin on the inside, and that's one of the reasons. We can get it wet or get it dirty, and it can just get washed or rinsed off. That's where I'm going to end today's video, and we'll see you right back here in the next one at Lumna Acres. Bye.